I believe the Lord would say to you and I today, it's all about Jesus. Would you not agree? It's all about Jesus. That's what we're here for, to worship Jesus and exalt him and love our Heavenly Father because of him. Jesus made the way possible for you and for me. Do you believe it? Yes. And today I believe the Lord would have me speak to us about choosing blessings in life. Do you choose blessings in life? Or do we sometimes Oop, let rubbish come out of our mouths. God wants us to remember, choose blessings. Jesus paid the price for you and for me. If you've got your Bibles or your phones, if you turn to Matthew 5, we'll be looking there in a moment at verses 1 to 12, maybe a little more. But from the moment you and I ask Jesus Christ into our lives, into our hearts, we're born of the Spirit of God. And you and I are supposed, hear that word supposed, to demonstrate and radiate the kingdom of God to other people. Are we doing it? Well, I think we'd all say we hope we are most of the time, but sometimes, you know, we don't. Your faith may start small when we first ask Jesus into our lives, and if there's anybody here today who has not yet asked Jesus Christ into their hearts by faith, we'd love to lead you later on. Or even now, somebody would if you want to just come quietly to one side. Some of the team will be there to pray with you if you wish to know Jesus right away. If not, come at the end. But whether our faith starts small when we ask Jesus into our hearts, or whether we go with a bang and become a Christian and say, whoopee, I'm leaving all this rubbish behind and I'm moving on in the power of the Holy Spirit. However, it's our choice. It's our choice. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. First, we have to be born again, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Word of God. We need the Word of God. As we've heard today, how it's helped Anya with her English as she she sat listening to the Word of God when she was under Alpha and then reading the Word of God helped her with English. Yes, English classes have helped as well, but the Word helps. The Word works. There's power in the Word. You and I are supposed to grow daily in our walk with Jesus. How's your growth lately? Ooh. I can't do it for you, but you can't do it for me. Kingdom of God will bring about a great transformation in your life and my life if we desire to change, we want growth, and we allow the Lord to change us through the power of his Holy Spirit and the word of God. And then there'll be growth in your life and my life. So church, you and I need to wake up today. We need to wake up to the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to wake up to the fact we're Christians on earth here for a purpose, to bring in the kingdom. And we must allow the Lord today to put you and me, I include myself in this, on the right track as we go through our lives. This is the only life we've got on this earth. Has anybody got another one on this earth? This is the only life we have in this human body on earth and we want to live it to God's praise and glory. Amen? Amen. So, are you all at Matthew 5 now? Matthew 5, we're going to read from verses 1 to 12. Holy Spirit, before I read this word, would you speak into our hearts that your word touches our hearts this morning. And we leave this place changed and on fire with a passion for Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And we know, as we've been hearing this morning in our prayer time, there's so many people being persecuted for their faith today. But these few verses I've just read are known as the Beatitudes. Split that up, the B attitudes. This is how you and I are supposed to be. This is our attitudes of what we're supposed to be. And if you noticed, I read different groups. And those who belong to these different blessed groups experience God's grace, God's love, because the kingdom of heaven has come near them. It's all about you and me and our attitudes as we learn to walk in the fullness of God, God's ways, God is love, not our ways. And Jesus has been emphasizing here that he's come into the world as a blessing to the world and he tells you and I that we are important to him. You are important to Jesus, every single one of you. And believe it or not, so is this hurting, needy world out there who don't know Jesus. Jesus died for the sins of mankind and all those who will repent and come to him by faith and receive him into their hearts. Matthew 5 and 1, where we just read 5, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2, tells us about Jesus when he saw the crowds. He went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him. Well, do you know this is similar in context to Luke 6, 17 to 49, but not the same. Luke 6, 17, if you're making notes. Theologians say these are two separate occasions. Jesus didn't call Matthew, who was a tax collector, to be one of his disciples until later on in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 9, 9. Matthew, being a tax collector, sitting in his booth with figures all day, would have been very precise and very accurate as would Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. You know, he was a doctor. He would have been very precise and concise. But on the occasion we're looking at today in Matthew, it's all about Jesus going up the mountainside. In Luke, he went down the mountainside. He came down the mountain after spending the night in prayer Jesus spent the night in prayer. Do you know when we've had half nights of prayer here, people can't cope more than an hour. I'm not too good myself. But Jesus, our Jesus, went up a mountain and prayed all night. This is in Luke 6. And then he called the 12 disciples to him. Jesus then designated them to be apostles. And afterwards he came down the mountain to the flat, to the plain. So, but we're looking today, as we said, at Matthew 5. And so let's pick up in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And although the Greek word here for poor is, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. If you're making notes, it's P-T-O-C-H-O-S, which literally translated, if you just saw it and literally translated it, means poor financially. But in this context, it means much more than that. It means those who lack who feel inferior, ever felt inferior? Ever felt inadequate? Ever lacked good health? It's all of this, it's all of this. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of, of heaven, because they will come. Jesus has come, Jesus has come. If we come to him, we can receive. We can receive and we can be built up. Jesus was saying to those who are poor like that, take heart, I've come. I've come to bring the kingdom of heaven close to you, to all who will receive me. And usually when we read the words kingdom of heaven, it's, it's referring to a, 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 the kingdom of heaven that's available and is to come through Jesus Christ. And then we see the phrase kingdom of God very often in scripture, and that is usually referring to the dwelling within us of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants all people to come to a saving grace in Christ. 
But not all people want to repent and come to Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. We, rescind, we surrender self to Jesus. Jesus. And we ask Jesus into our hearts by faith. When we do that, we can receive the blessings of our Heavenly Father. We will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We will live by faith and not by sight. But it's a choice. You've still got a choice then. We still can be guided by the Holy Spirit of God. But once again, it's a choice. Is the old free will going to rise up, the old carnal man or woman, and say, I'm going to do it my way. Choose the blessings. Choose the blessings. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn. Well, sorrowing because of problems in life. Maybe bereavement, difficulties. Oh, we, we regret something we've done. We regret things in life. We get older in life and think, if only we'd have done things different. Sorrowing, mourning. But we need to look to Jesus who will help us through those times. If we're mourning because of bereavement. It's awful and there is a time of mourning. But the Lord wants to help us, to bless us, to get us through those difficult times. And they do pass, but they never go away, some of those times. We must respond as Jesus would. He wants to help us through. What about Matthew 5, 5? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yes, I've gone one ahead, haven't I? Thank you. I won't say it was a deliberate mistake, waiting to see if anybody was awake, but thank you. Verse 5, yes, let's go back to verse 5, I missed it out. Blessed are the meek. Well, meek doesn't mean that I'm, oh, I'm just going to hide away and just be absolutely nothing. I'm a worm. It means being gentle or kind. It's not weakness. It's gentleness, kindness. Once again, this means you and I cannot use our carnal initial responses to situations we come up against and also the way we respond to others. We have to wait and compose ourselves. Think of a red traffic light. You don't drive over it. You have to wait for it to go amber and you prepare yourself to go on green. And it's literally the same. And Terry will tell you, I used to have a little bit of a, a temper. Um, you know, my initial response would have been poof. I've had to get that under grips and it's gone. It's gone. I don't have a temper like that now. You and I must respond as Jesus would. That means being gentle and kind, meek, not weakness, okay? Kindness is gentleness and love, compassion, gracious, graciousness, forgiveness. God's a forgiving and loving God. God loves you and I, even when we get it wrong. He's a restoring God. He doesn't want you and I to make instant responses to others, which we may regret. We need to learn and live by faith, not by sight, and not by hearing things and thinking, why did they say that to me? This is why we need to allow the fruit of the Holy Spirit to flow through us. The fruit of the Spirit is for you and for me. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the faithfulness, and the self-control, Galatians 5.22. Now we are on to Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So if you and I are hungry for more of the Lord, and I think this morning it was, you know, let the Lord allow us and help us take our minds off ourselves so we go deeper with him. Give him time. Give him time. If you and I really want to know our Heavenly Father, we will give him time because he's the creator of the universe. He's God Almighty, and we can have relationship with him through Jesus. I find that mind-blowing. We will be clothed with righteousness, means being right with God through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Well, if we're merciful to others, guess what? God will be merciful with us. Why? Because he loves us. I've said it once or twice already. God is love. He's not there with a big stick waiting to beat us up. He wants to help us. He wants to read his word, 
know his word, love Jesus, listen to the Holy Spirit. As I said just now in, in verse five, we need to have love for other people, forgive other people. If we want God to show us mercy, to show us grace, kindness, and walk in his blessings, we've got to be the same with other people. We can't afford in our anger to make those instant responses. Striking when the iron is hot, do you remember the old saying? We get burnt, or we burn other people. Don't. Choose the blessings. Choose to bless somebody who's hurt you. Don't be harsh. Proverbs 15, one and two. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. Have you ever you thought, why on earth did I say that? If only I could take it back and start all over. Yes, am I the only one? Come on, I'm sure we all have. Bless and do not curse with our speech. Whether we're in the right or we're in the wrong or whether the other person's in the right or they're in the wrong, it's a learning curve with us. We have to learn. Curses, you know, as we speak badly of others, have a habit of bouncing back on us. Well, let's take time to digest hurt and pain and then respond in the correct godly way. Matthew 5, 8. Let's look at that. Blessed are the pure in heart. Well, we want to be pure and right with God. Negativity, when we speak negativity or when we think negatively, it sticks to your brain like chewing gum. I've used that analogy before and people looked at me blankly and you're looking at me blankly again. But it does. When you and I are negative, it seems to stick in there. It won't go away. Well, we don't want it. Don't start with it in the first place. Aim to keep our hearts right with God. The weapon that can destroy you and destroy me is what? Ourselves. Our thinking, our stinking thinking, as some people would say. Our actions that sometimes are so wrong. Our lack of communication with the Lord when we're in a difficult circumstance. You know, we want to be pure in heart. Give God time. Why don't you make a decision, instead of becoming an addict to a TV program, become an addict to his word. As you start to read his word, you will be amazed. The Holy Spirit will give you a hunger and a passion for his word. And then we come on to Matthew 5, 9. Are we all peacemakers? Oh, absolute silence in here. Uh, well, God wants us to be a peacemaker and you and I are going to have to learn if we want to really be blessed. We've got to start to build bridges with people. Are you a bridge builder? Am I a bridge builder? Because you and I need a sense of perspective in our lives because God's got a plan for your life. Every single one of you in here he loves. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. And don't think to yourself, oh, well, I'm old, it's over. No. God's still got a plan for you until the day we leave here and go to be with him. He's got a plan for your life and a plan for my life. And he wants you and I to be peacemakers. He wants you and I to bless people. He wants you and I to be kingdom builders. Are you and I kingdom builders? Do we gossip the gospel? Do we chat to people? Do we try and encourage people? What about the people in your street? What about your neighbors? What about the person who gets up your nose because they always get to the till before you do in a supermarket? Have you noticed that? You're wheeling your trolley and somebody whips in with a basket right in front of you. So what do I do now? I look behind me and if the person behind me has only got two things, I say, would you like to go before me? Yeah, come on, we've got to learn these things. And sometimes it's not easy. So. We want to be known as kingdom builders and we want to be known as peacemakers. What about Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12? It's all about persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of being right with God, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then we go on about persecution. Christians are dying for their faith, folks. Christians are being tortured. Christians are being imprisoned. 
and still they won't renounce Christ. Praise the Lord. Would you and I be like that in some of these countries? It is estimated that approximately 70 million Christians have been martyred for their faith in the world in the last two millennia. They're facts I got off the internet. 70 million Christians in the last two millennia. But approximately half have been in the 20th century. Can you believe that? Amazing. The shocking fact, it's estimated that 100,000 Christians are killed every year because of their faith. 100,000 Christians. Now those st statistics suggest that one out of every seven people live under persecution. Look around you. One in every seven live under persecution. We heard this morning, we're free. We can worship in spirit and in truth. We're not afraid of secret police at the door. We're not afraid of Bibles being taken away, family being taken away. Praise God for our freedom in this country. We need to pray for others who don't have it. Yes, there's a persecution we can experience here when evil lies are spread about us, when people detest us because of our faith. Don't retaliate, folks. Don't retaliate. Our God will indicate on our behalf. And then we mustn't allow self-pity to come upon us so we wallow in it. Oh, poor me, they all hate me. Nobody likes me. Well, perhaps I'd better water it down a little bit, what I say about Jesus. No, just be kind and loving. The gospel is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each one of us here today and in our country needs to think about and be ready if the pressure of persecution ever came to our shores, our towns, our villages, our churches, our homes. I think today you and I need to make a decision not to stumble through our lives, but to hold fast to Christ and his word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord each day. Worship him. Talk to him. He wants to, you too, because he loves you. And do you realize praise and worship is a tool against the wiles of the enemy, Satan? Blessing you and Blessing the Lord, which you and I can do every day, will keep you and I from burnout. Did you realize that? As you praise and worship God, he will build you up and you will rise on wings like eagles. Do you know, this is known, the, the um, Beatitudes here, how we're supposed to do, is really part of the Sermon on the Mount and it then follows on. So. In Matthew uh, 5.13, Jesus goes on to talk about salt and light. I won't read it, read it at home. To this hurting and needy world. Salt is a preservative and Jesus is the light of the world. This means it's your and my responsibility to be witnesses for Christ. We live in freedom. We need to be Jesus' hands and feet. The attitudes that you and I have been speaking about in Matthew 5, 1-12, well, 1-9 to really, because the rest was about persecution. But they need to be what we're living by. They're vital. They're vital. When we witness to others, we will be blessed. If we witness in the way that Jesus is saying, you'll be blessed. We're blessed to be a blessing. Not everyone, though, wants Christians to act in this way. Have you noticed it with friends and family? But just zip it and love people. Because love covers a multitude of difficulties. And Jesus said, follow me. He wants you and I to be his hands and feet here. So I won't read this, but in Matthew 17, Jesus, uh, sorry, Matthew 5, verse 17, further of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about his fulfilling the law and the prophets. And then he goes on in verse 18 to say, for truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Powerful words. But the Ten Commandments, which are in the Old Testament, are still relevant today because they're summed up in the royal law. 
Luke 10, 27, who knows what that is? Yeah, it's the statement, one of the mission statements of this church. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor? Anybody. Why don't you start to read some of the Old Testament, the Psalms and things like that. Start to read it. It's a shadow of what was to come in the New Testament, the New Covenant. And Jesus then still goes on to teach about the Sermon on the Mount. Um, he's on the mountain still with the rest of the disciples and all of his followers. And the crowd was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it goes through Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7, all those chapters. Read them when you get home. Ask the Lord to speak to you through them and be blessed. You see, the blessings and the curses were listed in Deuteronomy 28. You can read that at home as well then the Lord wants you and I to walk in his blessings. Therefore, we need to choose life and choose the blessings because Jesus paid the price at Calvary. He paid the price at Calvary for you and for me and for everybody. He'll bend the knee and ask him into their hearts by faith. The Old Testament is full of God blessing people. Once Jesus came to earth and died for the sins of the world, rose from the dead, ascended back into heaven, and even as he was ascending, he blessed his disciples. It was important. He blessed his disciples. Luke 24, 50 to 51. And you and I can learn more of the power of the Lord's blessings upon us as we delve deeper into his word, the Bible. Romans 12, 14 tells us to bless and not curse people called to bless the nation of Israel, folks. In Numbers 24, 9, we're told, may those who bless you be blessed, and may those who curse you be cursed. We want to bless Israel. Let's run the race of faith until our race ends and not give up. Amen? I'm determined to stay on earth until Jesus calls me home or until we're raptured. Amen? Amen. Yep. I'm not getting no earlier bus. Jesus warned you and I about deception in end days, and we are in end days. It's no longer end times, we're end days. When will it be? We don't know. But we know there's deception and lawlessness in end times like this, both in and out of the church. We're currently watching the values of our world being eroded away, decimated, and people deceived. But Jesus is returning, and he's returning before the end. We worship this morning, and we're excited. Jesus is returning. I'd love it to be our lifetime. We don't know, but hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Are you and I watching for the spiritual signs of his return? Are you and I aware of what's going on in the world? Do we follow what's going on in the world? What's going on in the Middle East and all these things. We need to be. I'm looking forward to the upward taker, not the undertaker. <laughs> and I cribbed that from somebody else. But I think that's what we need to be doing. We need to be thinking, yes, Jesus has got it all in hand. Won't well, catch God by surprise. God knows when Jesus is returning. We don't, but Jesus is returning. It's time to gossip the gospel and love people into the kingdom. Have you got family and friends don't know the Lord? Have you got family and friends that have slipped off the rails? I have. Just love them back. Don't try and push the Bible down their throat. It won't fit. Love conquers everything. You and I can't leave it to our new pastor coming in July. It's all of us, folks. It's family together to bring in the kingdom. It's our responsibility, yours and mine. And we need to know what we believe. You need to know what your faith is. You need to understand your Christian faith, I do, and believe what we know and walk in it. Walk in it. As you and I choose to bless others, God will bless us. Do you believe it? Don't depend on your feelings. Your feelings are absolutely unreliable. One day you might feel tired, one day you might feel happy, another day you might feel sad. Don't rely on those. Rely on worshiping Jesus by the power of the Spirit and allow his love and his peace to fill you and his joy to fill you. Joy is not happiness. Joy is what's within. Joy bubbles up. Happiness is happenings. 
The nature you and I feed will dominate our lives. So don't feed the carnal nature. It means we've got to be careful what we do, what we say, what we watch on TV, what we watch on the computer, what we read. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34 tells us that. So what you and I fill our minds with day by day is what will affect our walk. I want to choose to walk God's ways. I want to choose to walk in God's blessings. What about you? None of you. What about you? Anybody want to choose to walk in God's ways and God's blessings? Come on, that's better. You're awake still. The Bible's calling you and I to holiness. And holiness is not a word that is used these days, but it means I'm separated for God. I'm going to do it God's ways. And I'm going to put my old habits to death. I'm not going to go that way. Isaiah 30, 21 says, Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice saying, This is the way and walk in it. I want to hear that voice and obey it. What about you? Do you want to do that? Obey the word of God. Luke 11, 28 tells us to. And you're only going to hear him if we give him more time. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, family. Today's word about the Beatitudes has told us that if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, being right with God, we will be filled. Because that's his blessing for us. That's his blessing for us. If you and I are merciful, compassionate, kind, gentle, peacemakers, pure in heart, praying for the persecuted in our world, becoming salt and light in this beautiful but battered world, we will in turn be blessed. God wants to be God in my life and your life, every day. He wants to be your protection. He wants to be my protection, your security, my security, the one we turn to day by day, in good and in bad. He wants to be that. He wants you and I to totally trust him. He wants you and I to totally turn back to him today. Will you do it? Will you choose the blessings? Will you learn to move in God's blessings, hour by hour? Well, even minute by minute, so we don't say and do stupid stuff. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Psalm 103. One day, I want to hear the Lord's words, which are in Matthew 25, verse 34. And I believe every single one of us in this auditorium and listening online or watching online wants to hear the same words from Jesus. Matthew 25, 34. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. That's what I want to hear. That's what I know you all want to hear also. Let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for your word to us this morning. And we pray, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would touch us. Holy Spirit, re-energize us. Give us such a passion for Jesus, a passion for the lost, a passion to delve deeper into your word and come closer to you. Lord, give us the heart's desire to choose, to bless, rather than to open our mouths and say wrong things. Lord, we want to be right with you in every area of our lives. And I pray today for my brothers and sisters here, our family, that we would all walk closer and closer with you, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, month by month, year by year, until you call us home or you rapture us. Everybody said, Amen.